So now that we've covered all of the cell surface structures, we've covered the motility aspect of prokaryotes, another sort of surface structure, we're going to finally move towards the inside of a prokaryotic cell. And that will be done in this next flowchart entitled Internal Organization. Now we are quite familiar with the internal organization of a eukaryotic cell based off of, off of the cell structures um, lecture that we had in Biology 115. But in the internal organization of a prokaryotic cell, we have to first and foremost mention that it's actually quite simple. It's simpler than the eukaryotic cell. Remember the eukaryotic cell had all of that endomembrane system, the compartmentalization, the nucleus, the nuclear pores, all of those things are not going to necessarily be quite as present in terms of the prokaryotic cell. Why is that? Well, that's because the internal organization of a prokaryotic cell, this should not be news to anybody, it lacks very important membrane-bound organelles. Lacks membrane-bound organelles, or organelles in general that have membranes. Things like a nucleus, so there's no nucleus in a prokaryotic cell. There is, of course, no mitochondria in a prokaryotic cell, and there's also no chloroplast. All of these things are membrane-bound organelles. Remember, the mitochondria has that double membrane, so does the chloroplast. The nucleus has a membrane of its own. These are membrane-bound organelles that are not seen in our simple prokaryotic cells. Well then, what is seen? If these things are lacking, there must be something at least in terms of especially the nucleus. The nucleus houses DNA, it houses genetic material. There must be some way that this prokaryotic cell does this, and there is. In the internal organization of a prokaryotic cell, we have something known as a nucleoid region. This is not a specific sectioned off compartmentalized region of the cell. It's just an area, let's say, that you can see in a microscope that's floating along in the cytoplasm it's not necessarily a hardcore structure bound to filaments. It's actually just floating around in the cytoplasm, and is the, it is the direct location of the bacterial chromosome. In bacteria, the chromosome will, of course, house the DNA. This is not news to any of us who have studied genetics. And also, in bacteria, thing to note is that there's usually just a single chromosome found in this nucleoid region, in this region of DNA specifically, just a single chromosome. Okay. Now, there's also a bit more DNA, a bit more genetic information, and that's actually found in a separate region of the prokaryotic cell known as the plasmid. Okay. There are plasmids in prokaryotic cells. These are smaller rings of DNA. This is something we covered in DNA technology quite briefly. Um, this is going to provide us a different idea of these plasmids in terms of its structure. Smaller rings of DNA key idea here is that they're rings. You will very clearly notice plasmids because they are a circular structure. These actually replicate independently and there's a reason we're mentioning this. What is it independent of? What is this replication independent of? That's of the, the nucleoid chromosome. That chromosome will do its own replication. That DNA will do its own replication in this region. The plasmid, it'll do its own thing also. The plasmid, uh, for the most part, contains few non-essential some, some extra genes, let's say, few non-essential genes. Genes that are still important, but not essential, meaning that they're not going to uh, be the death of the bacterial cell if it doesn't have a plasmid. Okay? It's just an evolutionary extra, let's say, that some bacteria, prokaryotes, have. Prokaryotes also, within their internal organization, have uh, cytoplasms. They have real estate within the cell. The cell is not just empty. There's an actual area in which you have cytoplasm, which will contain ribosomes. Don't confuse cytoplasm for cytosol also. Cytosol is just the fluid-like component within cytoplasm. Cytoplasm is just the entire region that's on the inside of a cell. That includes ribosomes. It includes, uh, oftentimes, storage granules. These are very simple uh, things that are within the cytoplasm, not necessarily even organelles, because ribosomes are just a bunch of protein, right? A bunch of protein and enzymes combined together. And also uh, enzymes, speaking of enzymes, they will be floating around. These enzymes are floating around because there's no mitochondria, there's no chloroplast. All of the enzymes that we learned about in cell respiration and photosynthesis just float around in the cytoplasm. Very simple, okay? Key idea, internal organization is simple. And final thing about the internal organization as we move our way sort of outwards is that at the very end of our internal organization, at the very uh, border, is the plasma membrane, of course. 
And right outside the plasma membrane, remember, is the cell wall, but that's a cell surface structure, not an internal structure. That's why we separate it. The plasma membrane is uh, usually going to be extensively folded. Uh, something you should automatically remember is that when you have folds, this extensive folding is going to uh, increase our surface area to volume ratio. And that's something very important for cells. So that's an increase upwards arrow for our surface area to volume ratio. That's very important in all microbiology. It's a big goal. And finally, last point about the plasma membrane. Um, within the plasma membrane, there are embedded enzymes, embedded not just free-floating enzymes as in the cytoplasm, but on the plasma membrane specifically, there are embedded enzymes for two major processes that I already mentioned, cell respiration and, of course, photosynthesis. What would be an enzyme? That would be something like an uh, ATPase, right? Something that uh, takes that H+, turns the motor, and brings out ATP on the other end. Very simplified form of cell respiration and photosynthesis. But you get the idea. So that covers our internal organization. Key idea here, key theme, very simple internal organization. We just have a region of DNA. We might have a plasmid floating around here and there. We'll have some ribosomes here and there, some enzymes, and the plasma membrane will just be there to enclose everything. And that covers our internal organization of prokaryotes.